And there we are. Well, I guess the, the big news for Shooting Star today is the Shooting Star and Billboard. You guys apparently jumped up a bunch of points. Yeah. Yeah, we did. 40 point jump. So, how, how long has this album been out? Well, what, two weeks? A week and a half? Two weeks, something, something like, like that. that. I can't really remember the release date, but it's been out about two weeks. Is, did you expect that, or are you kind of a little shocked that it just blasted right up there? Well, our last album uh, was sort of peaked around the 90 mark. So we were hoping, you know, that it'd at least get to there, but yeah, I, I, that's a big jump. I mean, no matter where you are in the charts or you know what's happening, that's a, that's a good. Were you already out on the road when the album came out, or did you just time it to hit the road as soon as it? This is a. It's our first show. First show. First show. Yeah. Yeah. Catches yeah. catches right at the beginning of our tour. So. Are you going to be with Cheap Trick for the balance of the of the tour? Or are you going to hopscotch around? No, we're gonna. We have about three or four shows with them here this week, and uh, yeah, then we jump around doing, doing some, all sorts of things. Doing some dates with Todd Rundgren and uh, 38 Special, and then we're doing some headlining of our own, and too. And we're so. doing a video. That's what I understand. We, we were just talking. That yeah. The, uh, the first I heard of Shooting Star was the, the Virgin Roadshow compilation when you were right. with them. Um, Virgin Records. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're still with Virgin, okay. but uh, we're distributed through Epic. Right. So. so what was that like, cutting your, your first video? What was that, 79 or 80? That that was was cool. We actually cut it before the record came out, yeah. 79, 79, which was still, you know, the video uh, media, the, you know, it was just a, still a really new thing. I think we were really lucky to be a new band back then and have a video. I know now, of course, a lot more groups are doing it, but when we first started out, it was rare to have a new group do a video. Yeah. And, uh, so I think that's, that's Richard Branson at Epic. Yeah. He yeah. knew what was going to happen. Right. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. we enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was an interesting experience to all of a sudden have to n not have an audience to feed off of. And, uh, but it's after five or six run-throughs and getting comfortable with the people on the crew and all that, it was, it was easy. Yeah. And it, it was something now that we consider just as challenging as playing live to be able to... Uh, Pull it off without anybody cheering or anything. Yeah. Right. How does how will that work for you? Do you know what you want to accomplish in terms of a video, or is it, or is it going to be a director having a greater percentage of an input than a record producer would have? We pretty much know what we want, uh, even down to where we want to shoot it and uh, how we want to shoot each segment of the song. Um, so we're going to go in with a pretty clear idea of what we're doing. Okay. What we're going to accomplish, yeah. yeah, I think. I think this time, since we've done a video and worked in front of the cameras some, that we have a better idea of what we want. Whereas last time we trusted Bruce Gower, and I think he did a good job, and it was lucky we had somebody to trust. But I think it's like maybe your first recording session, you're, you're leaving yourself more in the producer's hands. And I think now, oh, yeah. as if the same way when we do an album, we have a great deal more to do with the production of an album than we did on our first yeah, one. Yeah, you learn more. You I think learn we'll, more about we'll do the same with the video. Mm -hmm. Try and get it artistically involved a little more. Will, will Bruce be directing this one, or have you chosen it, I, it has, It's not been uh, finalized yet, I don't think. Um, I know we're doing it next week, but I can't. It's been the, in the negotiations, so I'm not sure. Will you be using Gower, Gower Fields and Flattery, or maybe even another? Again, that's, that's, that's I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I think, I think it's, actually, it's actually been settled now, but I don't know. You know we're just going to show up and, and hope that, you know, we're doing it at Caribou Ranch. Right, that's what I understand. Uh, apparently, the Caribou, you, you consider put a lot into the album in terms of not just the physical studio, but where it's located. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, we've, we've always been lucky enough, I think lucky enough, to record our albums uh, in a place away from a, a city. Our first album we did in England out in the countryside at Gus Dudgeon's studio. And the second album we did at Randy Bachman's mansion up in Washington. And then, and then we thought, well, you know, it's been successful. We felt comfortable not being in the, in the rush of the city. So uh, we went ahead and went to Caribou, and it was, it was fantastic. Uh, it's a great it, setting. Yeah, it's the type of place that uh, it, I wish we had more time to cut Red up there. Red um, Red yeah, I got you. I got your time. Yeah. But uh, it, it's the type of place that I, I wish we had more time because... I mean, it's like something out of a Western movie. There, there, there are some ghost towns on the property and, and waterfalls, and, and, and you could really just, you can utilize the whole place. I know when we went up there, 
uh, to start recording, they had directors in looking at it for a possible movie next year. So, but it's that kind of place. It's really nice. Will you be using those visuals in your video? You never know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've since we know the place well enough, we've already picked out places and spots and things like that to shoot. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna use we're gonna use some of the some the, of the, the facilities. Yeah. yeah. How, how many songs are you gonna do? Two. Those? Yeah, we're doing uh, a song that Charles sings uh, called Where Are You Gonna Run, yeah. which is our first single, and a song called Heartache that Gary sings that you never know, it could be a single sometime. Mm -hmm. Hopefully if the first one is a smash, the second one will jump right on top of it. Yeah. You got it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but How that's funny. Yeah, I, I understand you're from, from Kansas City. Yeah. Right. How did you get signed to Epic? I mean, to Virgin, rather. Well, that's a, that's a, yeah, that's a strange it, story. Even though we're from Kansas City, all of us have lived a lot of other places. Charles grew up a lot of his life in Philadelphia, and uh, the bass player Ronnie and I grew up, uh, didn't grow up, but we lived in London for a couple of years, and Gary, the other songwriter in the band, lived in New York for three years. So we realized at an early age that <laughs> you, you can't make it in Kansas City. It's a great place to live, but you've got to go to the coasts or somewhere else to have any success. I think I think there's a, a, a lot of bands out in the middle of the country that have this sort of dream of a big record you know, executive just happened to fly into Omaha and go to a club and see a band and it just isn't ever going to happen. No. And, so uh, we, we sort of took it upon ourselves to, to go to New York and present the band and at the time uh, we had New York management and they had a showcase set up a lot of record companies, Virgin was not invited even. Nobody knew they were in the country yet, and they were in the process of opening an American office. So uh, the president just sort of stopped by because he heard uh, the band was playing. And the next day, we started negotiations. And uh, so they had just been over in America about a week. So it was a real, a real coincidence. Yeah, I remember that. They, they seem to have that magic touch right there. We're picking bands out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. and, uh, no, they, they have big plans for the American thing. They scaled that back, haven't they? Yeah. Along with yeah, they pretty much. I think they bit off more than they could chew initially, but but uh, but they're doing it right. Yeah, I think unfortunately they came into America right about the time that the the uh, yeah, economy kind of went like that. Right at the time when the record yeah. in, the record industry. It just made it difficult for a new label to try and you know even though the, even though people a lot of people in America don't realize what a huge label Virgin is in the rest of the world. Uh, yeah. Very strong in Europe. Yeah, very particularly strong. Europe. What, what do you think about that? I've talked to a couple of bands, and they came in at that hard time. And it seems like, in the long run, it served them. You know, I'm sure a few got bashed away and put aside, but the bands that managed to get some following when things were going bad now seem to be really kicking in. You know, yeah. I think they just... No. <laughs> well... No, no, I, I, know I know what, you know what you're saying. I think uh, a lot of people were aware of bands, but necessarily didn't go out and buy the album because they just didn't have the money. America, yeah. America is such a different market from England. I, I, I think in some respects they, they thought that things would happen quicker, but I mean it's just taken this long. I think you know it's just taken this long to, to get these people, to knock down enough doors and, uh, you know, get enough people to listen. You know, including us. It's just it, it takes a while. You know, this country's so big. And uh, whereas in England you have you have just a few radio stations that that pretty much govern the whole country, yeah. you know. And Get what happens on that radio is like the it's syndicated radio in every in every small town in England. So so once something hits there, hits London, you know, at the radio station, it hits the country just like that. But it just doesn't happen this way. Mm -hmm. Although the consultants have almost got it to that point. My guy yeah, picks it's your record for one station. He's picking it for seventy or eighty stations. We, we've been lucky to uh, to have a lot of consultants believe in the band, but I do feel sorry for bands that can't get through to, you know, that maybe one person just doesn't enjoy their music. And we all know that you can't please everyone. And there are bands I, I think that you know, it's been tougher on them because maybe a key per, uh, you know key programmer is not like the band. Or maybe a lot of their other radio station programmers as individuals might have played the band. But that's, you know, that's just the way the music you business the is going. the jocks are taking the record home and listening to it at night because they like it and they can't even play it. Yeah. Th that, that happens. That happens a yeah, lot. Does happen Which a lot. is the nice thing about MTV is that it, it, a video just reaches so many people that, yeah. that radio just 
can't really reach I mean, in, 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 in such a different way. Yeah, that's a, way. I think the can, radio can reach the people, but it reaches them in the MTV reaches them in a lot of different ways. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's more of a, it's more of a, 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 I guess, a passive thing where somebody can just turn on the TV and get a, a whole picture of the band as opposed to just hearing a song in the background. You can hear a radio, yeah, for a hundred times you can hear a radio and still not know what they look like if you no. walk past them on the street. Sure. No, and, and image is so important to talk Particularly about. something we found in a country as big as America is that we were get, when we did our first videos and they were running on some of the cable TV channels, we were getting fan letters from places that we never would have played. You know, yeah. small towns in Texas that concerts never go to. And, Seattle, and, Washington, and, and, and you know, little places, other small places. Yeah, small places that, you know, a band isn't going to be able to tour because you just can't hit every city. And I think that's the greatest thing about it is not only then can they hear your music, they can see you on television and get an idea of what the band is about visually, too. So that maybe they'll make a trip 200 miles to a major city to see you play, whereas before they wouldn't have really had any idea. And I think that's great. I guess you're running about time to go play on your first gig here. You got any words for the country here? Like the shooting star is out and ready to rock? Just give us a shot. Yeah. Just listen to the record, see if you like it. We're coming at you, so this is our favorite album we've ever done. So. Yeah, I think we're more behind this. If you've ever so. wanted to listen to Shooting Star, you should listen to this one. And you're going to cover the country? We're going to be out there from now until when? Christmas. At least Probably Christmas. With a small Take break at Thanksgiving, I hope. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. I enjoyed it. Yeah. <clears throat> nice talking to you. Yep.